Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I want to talk about a forgotten class which is the Herald. The Herald became basically surpassed by the Vindicator because the Vindicator can unleash more damage and also Vindicator has an healer build so it's more versatile like you can change Vindicator DPS or the Vindicator heal. You don't really need Herald. But still, Vindicator is a lot more egoistic and as a solo player, it is a solo damage and offers almost no support to your allies. Herald, on the other side, can provide a huge support to your allies with permanent boons almost, like permanent fury, permanent swiftness, a lot of might, some protection, some regeneration, while also providing a lot of damage. Don't forget that the Herald was considered one of the best DPS classes before End of Dragons came out. So, let's get into it. This is the build I used in my gameplay and uh, which I thought would be the best considering the current meta. But still, you can change some stuff which also I will tell you. Okay, right here we get unsuspecting strikes. There's no no discussion, the other two traits are just not good. Then here you can get Assassin's Presence which will apply AoE Fury to you and your allies for 3 seconds and a quarter every 10 seconds. As you see there is an internal cooldown. This is nice to pump up some more Fury but I think it's not needed because your party should be giving you Fury and also you can give Fury with your Facet of Darkness. So I would just go for Notoriety, which makes us do more damage because Might will grant us more power and less condition damage. We don't need condition damage, so the additional power is not very nice. Then here you can run Swift Termination, which is a damage increased by 20% when attacking enemies below 50% HP, which is a very strong trait to finish down people or like people who are struggling to survive, it's a huge damage boost to be honest. But still, I chose to go Brutality for my build, in my gameplay you will see Brutality, but still, I wouldn't say Switch Termination is worse, it's just different. On Brutality we gain Quickness when we swap weapons, which is nice, but the additional feature of this trait is what caught my interest. So when we have quickness, our strikes will remove stability and this removal can apply only once per second per target. So every hit we give while we have uh, quickness will remove a stack of stability, even if it is not a CC. So after the recent nerfs to the corruptions, I think this is a very useful trait, in my opinion. It is less damage than Swift Termination. But I think removing some additional stacks of stability from the enemies, since the corruption went too low right now, I think it is very nice. And also the additional quickness, like you swap to hammer and you have your skill 3 or skill 2 with quickness, it is very nice to be, have, to be a fast cast on these skills. So, it's your choice. You need more damage, swift termination, you need more corruption, you use brutality. On the invocation trait line, we get this, 7% flat damage increase while we are above 90% health. Here you can get incensed response which, gains, which grants us might when we give ourselves fury. So every 3 seconds when we apply fury to ourselves and also from other sources like this and this and also this assassin's presence, we get two stacks of might for four seconds. I think this is not really worth it in my opinion because we are supposed to be having 25 stacks of might from our supports and from ourselves already with the facet of strength. But if you see that you are not having a lot of might you can go incensed response. In my build I run spirit boon which makes us invoking a legend grants boons to nearby allies based on the legend that was invoked. So when we invoke the Dwarf, we get a stack of stability, this only works in combat, we grant ourselves and also our allies a stack of stability, and when we swap to the Dragon, we apply protection. I think it's nice to have mostly the stack of stability, it can really save 
your ass, to be honest. Then here we get Roiling Mist, which may basically makes our uh, Fury give us 40% critical chance increase instead of 20, which is huge, since you, you don't need full Marauder gears to have the critical chance cap. On the Herald trait line, you can run Rising Momentum, which is 5% movement speed for each upkeep point we are using. Or you can use core value, improve the effects of the true nature skills. So when we use true nature, which is our F2, like the second part of our F2, we will get two stacks of stability and with this trait we get another stack of stability. So three stacks of stability if you use it while you are on dwarf. Instead, if you use it while you are on the dragon, you increase your boons and the, on your allies every boon you have by 2 seconds but if you have this trait right here you increase them by 3 seconds I think this is a very nice addition because you will boost alacrity, quickness, stability, resistance, protection, might and every boon I think this is very strong to support your allies and yourself mostly for the defensive boons I meant and like the ones which are harder to apply like you don't have permanent quickness most of the time, you don't have permanent alacrity, permanent stability and permanent resistance. So an additional second is very strong in my opinion. Here we run shared empowerment, the other two traits are not for, the, for this build. And then right here most people run forceful persistence which is an additional damage dealer. So we do 3% more damage with our with our attacks for every facet we have active or if we are not in the dragon stance but we are like in the dwarf we use these vengeful hammers and this count as 13 percent so it's your choice in my opinion draconic echo is one of the best traits in the game because you will retain your facet passives for a duration after using your consume skills. So you use like this thing, you use it and you see your fury will still pulse because of this trait. So you can you, you I recommend you use every of this uh, right here, basically maybe except the facet of light which can save your health. You use everything and you swap to dwarf. And uh, this stuff right here, facet of darkness, of strength, elements and chaos will still pulse you boons to you and your allies and also the facet passives will give you additional boons like 5% critical chance on this on the fury one and also 5% more damage on the facet of strength you see this right here you gain 5% more damage by using it so i wouldn't recommend going forceful persistence unless you want to go full damage but i think Draconic Echo will still provide more squad damage because of the buff to you and your allies. Okay, this is the gear section. What you want to reach is 60% critical chance because your fury will give you an additional 40% critical chance total. So from 60 you jump to 100. So this is very strong because you won't need a lot of precision and you, you can go Berserker or Valkyrie or, uh, or um, dragon stats instead of the marauder which has less ferocity and less power but more precision so what i did was just a combination of ferocity of berserker sorry valkyrie marauder and dragon it's your choice everything is the same just reach this critical chance right here 60% I have a little bit more now because of the major borderlands bloodlust the rune is a scholar because we are very ranged we have a lot of range and our skills do a lot of damage and we, you do it you do them from far away you use your skill tree which most of the time you will have full health and so you will benefit from the scholar damage boon on the sixth rune on the hammer I run force and accuracy accuracy for the additional critical chance of course and on the mace and on the sword I run accuracy and bloodlust so how does this work basically on the revenant you have these facets 
and when you apply and when you keep them activated you will remove some upkeep points so you will you will not get energy or you will get less energy while you are in combat so this is the fury one when you press it again you will break stun and also apply vulnerability blindness around you and you will apply also revealed this is the facet of strength which applies might but if you press it again you do an attack around you which does a decent amount of damage and also it will apply you the burst of strength for 5 seconds making you do 7% more damage this is the facet of elements which will pulse swiftness and when you use it it is a very strong cleave damage skill you use it on the ground right here and you keep doing damage you can move around and this will still pulse very strong damage skills which you should use properly to cleave downies or to cleave the enemies derg if uh, they stop there it's three pulses so try to keep them all on the enemies very strong skill which also you will notice it on your arc dps as your top skills the facet of chaos of chaos will pulse protection and when you use it it has some long cooldown like 35 seconds it will do a big launch on the enemies a big cc and also apply five seconds of super speed very strong skill five seconds of super speed is another support option since most of the supports can't provide the super speed properly like they can provide some except the scrapter which is a huge super speed provider but still no one can provide permanent super speed so if you can give five seconds of additional super speed it's always nice and now i didn't discuss i didn't discuss the facet of light which will pulse regeneration to you and your allies and if you press it you become invulnerable for three seconds basically like it's not invulnerable because you can still be hit and cc'd and condi damage works on you but still all the damage including the condition damage will turn into healing for you so use it while you are super low you press it and every damage you take will heal you so you will go full health again most of the time very nice saving skill for you on the dwarf we have an healing skill which also removes five conditions from us we have the inspiring reinforcements which is a very strong skill which pulses stability also applies weakness on your enemies and also this um, very nice damage it was nerfed several times but still it's a very strong skill one of your most important skills here we have an aoe um, a ranged taunt on your enemies you press it and you launch like a chain and you will taunt them to you I wouldn't recommend using this on War vs World, it's just one target and the enemy will probably have stability. Here we have Benchful Hammers, very nice skill, it will basically make you pulse hammer around you which will do damage on your enemy. It's unblockable, it's a nice damage dealer and also provides healing and as you see it doesn't deplete a lot of upkeep, so you can keep it up for a lot of time always use it like when you are finishing your skill tree you are from range you don't have enemies around you so you don't keep your vengeful hammers on you you use this and you press vengeful hammers at the end so you can spin some hammers on your enemies right here also i saw some people using the superior sigil of Romancy on the hammer so the swap sigils on revenant also work while you swap legend so you use your skill tree you swap legend at the end and your hydromancy sigil will trigger and will deal damage around yourself when you are right here at the end of your skill tree so it's an additional like 1k burst which you sum up to phase smash of course on the dwarf you also have right of the great dwarf which is a stun break and also it has a long cast so beware and also cost 40 per 40 energy when you use it you gain 50% damage reduction you and your allies around you very strong skill now let's get into the facet of nature you use it and you get as you see on the wiki right here you get a rather reduced damage taken by 20, 10% and then if you use this again you will gain three stacks of stability also because of this trait i chose right here if you use your facet of nature while you are on the dragon stance you will get 
increased duration of bones applied to your allies, which is this one right here, gives a flat plus 20% duration to any bones applied to you, regardless of the source. So it is very strong to get some, boon, some additional boons. And also when you use it while you are on the dragon, you will apply 3 seconds of every boon you have to you and your allies. You will extend the duration of the boons you and your ally have. So let's get into the weapons right now. So how do you play it? Most of the time you will be on your hammer from range you are considered a strong part of the range spike you wanna use your skill 2 and then immediately your skill 3 you see your skill 2 will cascade towards the enemy and at the end it will reach them if you cast the skill 2 and then immediately the skill 3 you will probably hit your enemies with the both skill 2 and 3 together and they will sustain a lot of damage at once and maybe they can't manage to out heal it and so Hopefully you get the downs on them. Skill 2 and skill 3. The other skills on the Revenant Hammer are strong. Like the Hammer Bolt is the your out attack. It is a projectile so it can be reflected but still it's a huge damage dealer and 5 targets is very nice. The skill 4 is a cone in front of you which protects from the projectile. You probably will not use it a lot. The skill 5 is a big strong CC but is still very slow to cast and uh, it costs 15 energy so I wouldn't really recommend using it unless you have nothing left. On, this, on the mace plus sword we get the skill 2 which is very important, it's a fire field which does damage, pulsing damage. The skill 3 is another strong skill which is similar to the Koala's sense of ruin by the hammer, you see it cascades in front. The difference is that this skill is less range, but still you will leap into it, so the range will be the, uh, the same at the end. And every attack area is a blast finisher, so you can blast might and whatever it is. The skill 5 is a shadow step, very nice to leap away from the fight if you are dying or to, or to get close. It works also if you are not in range, so it's very useful to escape. Your skill 4 is one of your most, import most important skills, you press it, you have this slow cast attack which, do, which does some initial damage and some additional strikes and you immobilize for 1 second per target you hit, so maximum 3 seconds of immobilize to 3 persons, to 3 enemies and I think this is a very strong skill because almost no DPS classes have immobilize. So you coordinate this like in the enemy bubble on the on your on your bubble sorry on uh, your wells bomb on uh, any cc you see you immobilize them and they are fucked because you cannot give stability to the immobilize you just got a cleanse but sometimes the cleanse are not there so now i will show you a commentary of my gameplay and then also at the end i will put my gameplay Okay, this is the first fight I will comment and also will point out my mistakes and also what to press and why I did press it and so on. So let's get into it. Okay, you see, I immediately before going, I you apply my facet of the swiftness, swiftness facet, which applies the damage on an AoE. Then I use my skill 5 because we are not ready to go yet and so I can cast a CC on the enemies, since we are not going, I still don't have to use my skill 2 and skill 3. Skill 5, now skill 2. What you want is, is to also use my skill 3, but your skill 3, don't forget that you will be stuck in the place while you use it, so if the commander will move away, you are fucked because you are alone there and you will die. So if I had used my skill 3 right here together with my skill 2, I would probably be dead right now, or maybe very close to die, unless my support saved me, which they should, but still it doesn't mean that you had to play ruthlessly. So skill 3, okay, I hit 2 targets, I used my facets for the additional passive boons, okay, we get back right here, we choose to regroup, the enemies are in front, you still go on hammer because it's your ranged option the other stuff is melee, when you, you swap to mace and sword while you are in melee. 
okay we walk onto them i use my facet of uh, nature for additional quickness you see how much quickness i have from the firebrand and from also from the chronomancer so it's very nice to use your brutality trait which is remove a stack of stability with every hit when you have quickness so skill 2 again here the enemies are running so you can use, i don't say you should use every skill randomly but still if you can catch an enemy do it so you will slowly terminate them okay i immediately swapped to the facet of swiftness and i'm ready to use it again you see now we have a downies i use it skill 3 the enemies are coming and we didn't move so it was fine i swapped to the melee weapon sets i immediately use my skill 3 which is the leap because i was a bit behind and also i activate my vengeful hammers so they will pulse damage around me then you should use your skill 2 on your mace while your skill 3 charge is on cooldown it has two charges with like two seconds bit in between uh, each stack so you use your skill 2 which is a fire field on the ground which will pulse some damage skill 3 again you leap on them and you hit them with the blast so you see how much damage like they are not big numbers but still they are numbers also your vengeful hammers are hitting and healing you skill 4 for the immobilize these guys are dead right now for the immobilize and also for the damage of course here you also want to use your skill uh, inspiring reinforcements from the dwarf but still i didn't need it oh here you go for some additional damage since i had everything on cooldown i have my skill 2 and 3 ready again skill 3 to leap into the enemies it's a very strong skill to reposition yourself and i think this sword on the main hand is surpassed right now because it has a better out attacks but still the skill 2 and the skill 3 are useless on your sword almost useless while the mace has a, a leap mobility skills and also pulsing skill aoe skills very strong and also nice damage so skill 2 okay this is this restarted so let's get into another fight this is kind of another fight when we are chasing the enemies but still they will stop and they will fight us so you see i use my facet of the swiftness i drop them on the, i dropped it on the enemies additional damage skill 3 i use my facet of might to get the 7% the 5% damage buff skill 2 and then i swap to sudwarf i have some ranged enemies around me in front of me i use my inspiring reinforcements and also swap to my melee weapon sets skill 3 by the maze which is the leap i dodge back i also used my skill 2 and now skill 3 on this guy which also was on my squad and so i leaped to my squad which is was very nice because i was a bit out of position then i mostly have no energy left i probably want to swap to the dragon stance again i still didn't do it okay skill 5 to get closer i wasted my skill 4 i didn't need to use it because i didn't have enemies around me i should have used skill 5 and then skill 4 probably okay skill 3 again skill 2 i swap to the dragon immediately the swiftness uh, face it and consume it so additional damage you see how much damage it will pulse then skill 3 i have some enemies behind me here i waste my skill 2 basically i cancelled the cast because the enemies were too close to me but still this skill will not cancel this the cast but you will just waste your skill you saw no damage from it and i wasted it so keep in mind to always remove your target and use your skill facing in some direction just like don't move and change the direction while you are casting the, sk the skill shoe from your hammer okay right here we get on the stairs i use my skill the elite skills consume facet for the super speed since we are moving 
super speed is all is always supposed to be used while you are moving and uh, like the commander is saying like three two one push you use it when he says one so you will have super speed and uh, if everyone in your squad does this or apply super speed properly it's very nice to run all at once both to chase the enemies or to engage or both to run away and reposition and then i cast my face it of elements again the swiftness one additional damage right here free damage while i can't hit from here the facet will apply damage skill three to apply pressure on the end on the dummies and we go down again skill two with pa which pairs a lot of a lot well with your skill inspiring reinforcement they are like very similar in the cast and the, in the animation then here i have enemies skill four nice damage and immobilize that guy is, is immobilized and now will die for it skill two and they are dead so it restarted thank you for watching this was a long video now i will leave you with the full gameplay which is not slowed and with music it's much more enjoyable if you like my content please consider subscribing and leaving a like and maybe a comment also i accept every critics of course because why not i am not perfect i, I am still a human so thank you for watching and see you on to the next video bye